My dudes, what's going on? If you saw my last video where it was all about star signs, I strongly suggest you watch that one first. This one is all about the constellation locations and how to get them. There's a lot of them, so I'll be going through them pretty quick. I'll show you how to get them and the easiest ways to obtain them, and which ones that you should probably skip because there's a few that are a huge pain. World 1 to World 4, here we go. So, let's get into it. So the first one is located in Blunder Hills, which is the World 1 town, and it's in the top right corner, which requires you to reach level 30 on 4 players. Quite easy one to get, not too hard self-explanatory. Number 2 is located where the branches end, which is the Wood Mushroom Zone, and it's located right here, and you must AFK for 1 plus hours. You can use a time candy, or just chill here for an hour, you'll just get it over time. The next constellation is located at the Valley of the Beans, which is a little tricky to see, but it's right beside the logs, which requires you to reach this star on four players. We'll be heading all the way to the end of the map to Tucked Away, which is AKA the Giga Frog map, and it's going to be located right here. Reach this star on three players, so just get your characters all the way to the end of the maps. Number five is going to be located at the Office, which is the end of the sewers which requires you to kill Dr. Ficus on three players, which is the boss right above us. Number six is in Freefall Caverns, which is where you mine iron and gold, and it's located right underneath the portal, which requires you to reach the star as any archer character. All you have to do is the prologue of the mining quest, and it usually gets pretty much close to level 10 or level eight, and then you just mine for about an hour on copper, and you're in. Number seven is located at Winding Willows, which is the BOA map, which is at the bottom platform, and requires you to AFK 24 hours on two players. Just make sure when you're done AFKing for 24 plus hours, click the constellation on that character just to make sure it counts. Next, we're going to be going to the World Wong Coliseum, which can be found at Froggy Fields. And we're going to be going to down below into the bottom right. Super small, hard to see, but clear this Coliseum on three players and click it before you leave. This next one is actually on the right side of Amarok in his boss map. And it requires you to kill Amarok in under 20 seconds on three players. This is pretty easy to do once you start getting into World 2, World 3. World 1, it's a little difficult, but you should have no issues. And for the last constellation of World 1, we're going to be heading down to Echoing Ingress, and it's located right here. Reach the star as any mage glass. I suggest to skip this one. This one is super time consuming because you have to get approximately mining to 45 with a mage, which is extremely tough and extremely monotonous. So just go ahead and skip this one. One down, three more to go. We're going to want to head on down to the Mimic Hole, which is the Mimic Spawn Point. And at the very bottom left of the platform, you can see it right here, which requires to reach the star in three players. Self-explanatory. For number two, we're going to make our way to Far Away Piers. And Sneaky right here is reach at the star as any mage class. You get your fishing up. It's going to take a little bit of time, but a little bit of AFK gains a little bit of XP percent. This should be no problem whatsoever. The third one is Grandioso Cannon. And as soon as you enter through the portal on the left hand side right there requires you to AFK for 36 hours on three players. Just make sure to click it so you know it registers. We make our way to the Coliseum, which is at the Mimic Hold, and we must complete the Coliseum on four players. Pretty self-explanatory. Our next stop is down at Efon's Tomb. So at the bottom left platform, you'll see a little tiny one right there that requires you to defeat Efon as beginner class. A beginner class is also a journeyman or a maestro, so either or work to get the job done. Now we make our way to Up Up Down Down, which is the place for the Moon Men, and it's sneaky little cactus right there, which requires you to AFK for 48 hours on three players. And for the last one of World 2, we head back to Yum Yum Grotto, and it's right here. Reach level 65 on four players. With the new chat bubble update, it's a little bit more hidden than usual, but it's right there if you look real close. Two more worlds to go. We start off as Frostbite Toundra, which is in the left-hand side before the World 4 portal, which is reach level 90 on six players. Next, we go to Steep Sheep Ledge, which is the sheep zone, and it's in the far bottom right, and it requires you to defeat a sheepy barehanded on four players. So just unequip your weapon, kill a sheepy, click the constellation, good to go. Next, we're on our way to Trapper's Folly, which is on the left side portal of the town, and it's going to be right here, which requires to reach level 15 trapping on five players. If you don't know how to gear trapping out, I recently made a trapping guide, so go check that out. We're making our way down to the refrigeration station, and at the bottom left of the bloke zone, it's going to require you to AFK for 60 plus hours on three players. Go ahead and do that. Now we mosey on down to the rolling tundra, which is the snowmen map, 
and it's at the very bottom right here before the portal, which requires a reach wave 11 on four players. I think you need approximately level 20 boulder rollers to get this done. So it's gonna take a little bit of construction work, but you can get it done over time. Then we head on down to Thermonuclear Climb, which is the third Meister map. And it's at the very bottom right here, which AFK for 11 plus hours on nine players. I don't suggest to skip this one. I just haven't done it yet because I'm kind of lazy when it comes to this one. But I mean, it's pretty easy. It just requires you to unlock all nine characters before you're able to do this one. After that, we make our way to Crystal Base Camp, which is the Neptune map. And it's in the top right corner here, which has reached the star on six players. You're going to be pushing every character to cheese or anyways. And then for the last one for World 3, we head over to Hell Hath Frozen Over, which is just after the Rams map. This one is a little bit hard to do because it takes a lot of kills in order to get to here. But once you're here, it just requires you to kill a blood bone on four players. And last but certainly not least, it's time for World 4. Now, the first one is going to be in the Outer World Town, which is the World 4 town. And at the top of the kitchen to the far left, there's going to be a consolation on a stalagmite. And it requires you to reach level 120 on eight players. A lot of these consolations for World 4 are just going to be very time consuming. So don't expect them to get them right away. The next one brings us to Spaceway Raceway, which is the purple mushroom zone. And at the bottom left, right underneath the portal, it's going to defeat all mushrooms before any respawn on three players. I would so strongly suggest to take all mob respawn off your character before attempting this constellation. We'll be heading on down to Donut Drive-In, and it's located right underneath Oinkin, which reach level 15 on four players. This is incredibly time consuming, and this is just gonna take a lot of time overall. We make our way down to Worm Highway, which is the Worms map. And right when as soon as you come out of the portal on the left-hand side here, you have to reach the star on three players. Easy peasy. We go for a nice jog down to Coco Tunnel, which is the chocolate bar map. And it's right here at the very top platform and it's defeat all Chalkies before respawn on four players. This is the same thing before take away all mob respawn. And if you want to do this very well, make sure to do it on a shaman or a barbarian anything that has any sort of AoE and great clearing speed. For the second to last one, we make our way down to Standstill Plains, which is the worm map, the other one, and it's right below the portal and requires you to reach this star on four players, another nice and easy one. And last but certainly not least is at Shelled Shores, which is the Shelly map, and it's right after the portal here, and you have to hit a mega crit on a clammy on four players. You guys don't know what Mega Crit is. Mega Crit is a talent book that you can get at the Flurbo shop. It's the last book and it gives you the ability to hit extra damage after you hit over 100% crit chance. I can make a Mega Crit guide in the future, so look forward to that. There you go, my dudes. World 1 to World 4 Constellation locations, all covered. Some of them are a little tricky, but once you get them, you'll never have to get them again. Thank you so much for watching. Hope this was helpful. Leave a comment if you have any questions or just want to tell me you enjoy the content. And the comment of the video is this one. You guys really know how to make me a happy man. Make sure to like and subscribe to help me out and help the algorithm that help on your idol on journey. Also, we are still recruiting for the IBA and the sister guild, the BIA. So join the discord and sign up in the guild sign up channel. Everything will be in a pinned comment below. And if you haven't checked out my star sign guide video, I'll leave a link to that too, so you know what to spend your shiny new star points on. Also stream on Twitch, but don't watch me though. Who does that? Anyways, my dudes, tune in for the next Eidolon video. Stay safe, happy grinding, and peace out.